the grids we have at Speed Week. And look at this for second place now. Up to the outside comes Mark Walker. The Darat will go through against the Sunbeam. And Ben Collins still a long way back. The Blitz and Benz has a problem. I think he's heading for the pit lane. Look, hand in the air. So I'm afraid the Duke of Richmond and Gordon's brother-in-law, Ben Collins, is heading for the pit. There he is. Oh, that's a shame for the Blitz and Ben's picking yeah. up, up front. It's the Walker show. Isn't it? <laughs> and they both have the same demeanour at the wheel, don't they? That hunched over body language, tucking in tight, ducking down out of the airflow. But I think it's mainly just to get a bit of leverage on that heavy steering wheel. It is very unfair to describe this as wacky races, but there are some quite remarkable cars in this. Uh, remarkable ideas of how to mate a car and an engine together to make it go fast in this period. So there, the Darren that did have second place dropping down the field because around the outside also now goes the silver Vauxhall 3098 of Rob Hubbard, Julian Goshi's car. So that picks up a place and the wasp-tailed Sunbeam in Indianapolis of Julian Maju dropping back. Huey Walker all of a sudden has been gifted an absolute whopper of a lead. He has, and he's making the most of it, isn't he? I feel like he's pushing a little harder than some of the others, everybody else, quite rightly, giving each other space. Meanwhile, Huey Walker up front, managing to set the car up nicely on the way into the corners, just back end drifting a little bit. These kind of cars, of course, not so keen to change direction. They're very good at stretching their legs down the straight. So, in gear it goes. A full rear wheel drive engaged through the time sensors goes Vaughan Gittin Jr. Now this looks a little bit more controlled than what it did yesterday when working on that car overnight trying to get it dialed for drifting. As we all know Vaughan Gittin Jr. not a stranger to a rear wheel drive Mustang pilot in one in the Formula Drift Championship in America. This is very tidy from Gittin Jr. at the moment it comes down looks for the narrow gate and that big Mustang an absolute awful. Now you can see at the bottom of your screen proximity sector lights. As soon as they get fulfilled, they will be illuminated. And there they go. Green means that he has fulfilled the one meter zone. And that will be one second each light off of his time. Vaughan Jr. makes his way around the barrels. Nice flick through. And this is a very tidy job from Vaughan Jr. in the Mustang. He's just pulling on the handbrake there. Locks up the rear wheels. Slows himself down, an incredible amount of power. 1,400 horsepower from electric motors into quick change differentials, bolted front and rear of that car. And the front drive shaft's not engaged for this part of the weekend. As Vaughan Jr. just misses one and misses the hay bales as he flicks that car towards the fence and across the line. And Vaughan Jr. with a 108. Just dropped in one proximity centre, the tidiest run he's done so far on the weekend. Well, for me, that is a very nice run. So I'm going to score it. And Ollie Bryant here in another really charismatic car. This Trans Am Championship winning uh, Ford Mustang rockets away, and that makes a brilliant noise. Oh, it's just so unique, isn't it? Stunning noise from the Trans Am car. Now, Ollie Bryant, outstanding driver. Also, very good here at Goodwood. Very familiar. Not all of the drivers in the shootout are familiar with this circuit. Ollie is not one of those. He knows his way around here. And that was achieved very in a very neat and tidy fashion, actually, as we watch Ollie Bryan down through the chicane, also neat and tidy, gauging the oh. width of that huge Trans Am car very, very accurately as he guided it through. Been heavily involved in the planning of the track. And some pre-filming here on the show. As he spins up 20-inch wheels on the back of this GTR and smokes out the pit lane. Here comes the showman right to the edge of the track as Banksy fires down into the chicane on the handbrake for a very long time. Gets that front bumper almost into the pull there of the chicane. Nicely done for Banksy. This flames are up for the front bumper once again. You can see him on the foot brake there. That's controlling the front wheel, slowing the car down, allowing him to do a rolling burnout as he comes through. The little by road and the tight gate. Now, oh! Gets it too close, gets the front bumper caught under the front wheels. Now, will he continue? He does. The front headlight drops down into the wing of Baxi. The showman keeps the foot planted. He's going to try and still put a complete run in. Got himself way too close to that hay bale. Destroys that Liberty Walk front bumper on that GTR. He's going to keep going, though, on the foot brake nearly the whole way is Baxi. Blows up the hay bales. Trying to set him fire with that. Exhaust in the front bumper. Headlight drops down even more. This could be a problem with Bagsy. The front wheel's very close to that headlight. 
inside the wing now, makes his way through the second by road into the proximity sector two. And he's still gonna go for it, his bags, he parts of the car absolutely flying everywhere. But the front wheel is almost locked dead solid by the headlight. Makes his way for the exit. Still on the front brake, still picks up 20 sensors. And you know what, for the show, Banksy destroys his car and drags the headlight wedged underneath the lower arm across the line. So there we go. 122 overall, two missed sensors. But again, 20. Now this is the McLaren Elva, which is another one of these cars where the windscreen is very much not included. Um, another limited car. They were going to do 299, is that right? 399, and then they decided fewer cars, more exclusive. You can see those, that, that sort of grill on the bonnet is part of this active uh, windscreen or foam windscreen thing where it shoots the air over the air. Please, sir, I think you'll find 249 will be made with prices starting at 1.4 million. But they were going to make more, I think, and then they decided that, that in fact, people, people would like it. Those who'd got one of the 249 uh, would like it if there were fewer cars uh, because they were more exclusive or their investment would be safe. Outside, just to pick up uh, the beast of Turin and uh, also dump a bit away as they make their way down through four water. So Duncan Pitterway needing to make progress here. Back on board, you can see everything that has to go on. It's not just holding on to this enormous steering wheel. You've got this, don't we call this a very early paddle ship gearbox? Don't ask me, I have <laughs> absolutely no idea what <laughs> that's Here we have car, Craig Davis's Mustang there. You can see the boss Mustang that he shares with Jason Plato. How will the restart occur? I think they'll just carry on behind the safety car and the filming car. Um, out of all of this, you're going to have the 23, this car owned by Lucas Halusa, but just look at it.